Hi, I'm O. Today, I would like to share with you a practical example on power cap design. This video only shows the power cap design using beam method. These are the design inputs for power cap design. Pro provided we have permanent action, variable action, moment at x and y directions, characteristic strength of concrete and steel, unit weight of reinforced concrete, estimated bar size, nominal cover, column sizes, power diameter, power working load, power type, and mean tensile strength. First, we carry out preliminary sizing for the power cap. Assume surf weight of power cap is 5% of total permanent action. It is to note that the 5% is just a trial and error figure. From the assumption, we can obtain the total service load using 1.05 GK plus QK. We can obtain the number of required PALs by dividing the NSLS to PAL working load. We need to always round up the value we obtain, say 3.2 in this case, and we can provide four numbers of PALs. Once we know the numbers of PAL, we can base on the guideline provided by Tom Linson in sizing the PAL cap as shown in figure one. Here, K is recommended between two to three depending on the soil condition. I use 3 in this case. Power diameter is 350 mm. Using the guideline, we can obtain the size, width, length and depth of the power cap. Surf weight of the power cap is checked against and shall be lesser than the assumed surf weight. If this is not complied, repeat the calculation for the numbers of power required. Figure 2 defines the distance of PALs from column load DI. We can determine the distance for all the PALs from column loads in both X and Y directions, DI XX and DI YY. We then sum up all the distances in X directions and Y directions. We can determine the distance of all PALs from column load in both X and Y directions diXx and diyy. We then sum up all the distances in x direction and in y direction. The design load VED max can be determined using 1.35 GK plus 1.5 QK. We can determine the imposed axle load on each part using equation 1. Uppercase N is axle load, lowercase n is number of parts, M is the moment and DI is the distance of Lot to power i. Sum di is the sum of all the distances of load to pulse. Here we can obtain the maximum service load and maximum ultimate load per power using the equation. Since only m sls about x as this is given, m ultimate x is obtained using factor of 1.4. The maximum service load per power shall be checked against and lesser than power working load W. Moment at XX and YY directions can be obtained using cantilever beam concept as shown in figure 3. Say the support of the beam is column and the concentrated load is from the power, therefore the information required for the beam analysis is the distance of the power from the column face. Again, it is from the column face. And the total load from powers of interest in this case, it's 2 for both x and y direction. Once we have obtained the moment at x and y directions, we can design the main reinforcements for these directions. We can first determine the effective depth for the bars in x and y directions. It is noted that the bars in y direction is placed above x direction. At x direction, b in the equation refers to the width of the power cap b. Then we can determine the k and z using the equations shown. It is to note that the limiting value for z is 0.95d. When the calculated value z is greater than 0.95d, z equal to 0.95d shall be used in the next equation for determining the AS required. 
the AS required need to be checked against AS minimum and AS maximum, suggested in Eurocode 2, section 9.2.1.1. AS provided shall be within the upper and lower limits of these values. In this case, we can propose reinforcement 12H16 for XX direction. Similar process can be used to determine the main reinforcement in YY direction. The calculation shown that the AS provided for YY direction is also 12H16. Next, we can perform shear design for the power cap. There are total three checks in shear, mainly vertical shear, punching shear, and maximum shear. The vertical shear is checked against a critical section, as suggested in BS8110, clause 3.11.4.3 is to be assumed to be located 20% of the diameter of the power inside the face of the power, or D over 5 as illustrated in figure 4. AV is the distance from the column face to the shear critical section. In this case, we can take half of the width of the power cap, excluding the column width, then deduct the power diameter, deduct the power extended edge, and plus again the D over 5. Thus, here we have the AV is 245 mm. Shear force at the critical section can be obtained by multiplying the ultimate load per power with total numbers of power at the critical section. In this case, the critical section across total of two numbers of powers. And beta is a ratio of AV to 2D. A reduced shear force VED can be obtained by multiplying the shear force at critical section with beta. The VED is to check against and lesser than the shear resistance in concrete. Shear resistance of the concrete VRDC is based on the minimum shear V minimum using the equation shown. It is to note that the limiting value for K is 2. In this case, VRDC is 439 kN is sufficient to cater the VED of 322 kN. Punching shear is another shear design criteria. Eurocode 2 section 6.4 recommended that the punching shear parameter is 2D from column phase as illustrated in figure 5. There is a clear guideline from BS8110 3.11.4.5 stated that if the spacing of power is not greater than 3D, which in this case is 3D, no punching shear check is required. Maximum shear resistance VRD max can be determined based on the shear at the column phase. The recommended equation requires the parameter of column, effective depth, and the FCK. The VRD max is compared and shall be greater than VED max. Next, we need to perform a check for cracking control. Table 7.2N and 7.3N are used for the check. Steel stress under quasi-permanent loading can be obtained using the equation shown. Once the steel stress is obtained, and based on design crack width of 0.3 mm, we can determine the maximum bar spacing and maximum bar diameter using interpolation method. We need to provide and make sure the actual bar spacing is less than the allowable. Actual bar spacing can be calculated with total width minus the cover at two sides, minus one bar size, and divided by the number of spacings. In this case, it's 11. Here we have provided bar size and spacing, which are lesser than the allowable. This is the detailing for the power cap design. Aside from bar 12 H16 at 01 and 02, this design also provides 5 H16, which is 25% from the AS required in the main reinforcement design as binder. I end my video on power cap design using beam method. See you in my next video.